Good morning. Mother of Perpetual Help devotion this morning. O eternal Father, in your plan of salvation, your word became man, announced by an angel and born of a virgin. Through the motherhood of Mary, you gave the human race eternal salvation. Through the resurrection of her son, our Lord, you gave joy to the world. You gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles as they joined in prayer with Mary, and our mother. By the help of her prayer, keep us faithful in your service and let our words and action be so inspired as to bring glory to your name now and forever. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Perpetual Help, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we present our petitions as the humble sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. To you do we send our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exiles show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Hear the prayers of your people as we come to you under the patronage of our mother of perpetual help. Despise not our requests and our necessities and deliver us from all dangers, O ever glorious and blessed Virgin. Let us pray. Grant wisdom and prudence to our Holy Father, Pope Francis and our Bishop Emeritus Brahm Robert McElroy and John Ramon, the auxiliary, leaders of our nation, state and community. Hear our Lord through Mary, our mother. Grant that people may live in social peace and religious unity. Hear us Lord through Mary, our mother. Grant that the Holy Spirit guide the sons and daughters of our parish in choosing their way of life. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant that the people of our parish retain their health and that the sick, especially for those who requires our prayer, regain their health according to your holy will. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant eternal rest to all the deceased members of our parish and to the souls of all the faithful departed. Hear us, O Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant guidance and aid in all the special intentions of this parish and all the needs of those present here. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Let us silently present our personal petition to our mother of perpetual help in silence. O oh, Mother of Perpetual Help, we the faithful proclaim your praise as the most pure bearer of God and our ready helper. You are the protection of our race, our faint nature's solitary boast and shelter us you, of humankind. The Lord is with you, and through you, he extends us the gift of his tender heart. All creation is made joyful, seeing you with the supplements, arms, uplifted, praying that the, the burdens of this world may be lightened, and that rulers may govern wisely, and that our souls may be redeemed, and we may enter into peace with your son. And so, blessed lady, all embracing refuge, be solemnly acclaim your protection and beg Christ, your son, our brother, for his mercy, that we may be kept from all evil. We acclaim your greatness, we venerate your gracious care, we present ourselves before you in faith, hope, and love seeking the truth that will lead us along the way into the life that you share with the Father 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Still, come be still, let us hear the prophet's calling. Still, come be still, let us hear the angels sing. For true light has arrived to illumine our lives, so often beset by the darkness. We find who we are in the light of the star on the way to our journey's end. Cast aside all your fear and dread. Come follow the light to Bethlehem. The way of salvation revealed to all. Christ our light has come. Christ our light has come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. And Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. May the Lord continue to bless you in this new year as we continue in this Christmas embracement. Meditating on the incarnation of the Lord, Emmanuel, God with us. We are in a week of epiphany, a time where God makes himself manifest, reveals himself to us. And the readings throughout this week will give us sights and examples of how God is manifesting his power, how the presence of our Lord himself makes changes, changes lives, changes people. It's changing the world. This week is very special for us as church that after embracing that time of preparation in Advent, the experience that we live through Christmas in the celebrations we participated on throughout this Christmas season, and this week is for us to be strengthened in faith, strengthened in hope, strengthened in love. Because that's what we're called. We're called to hope and embrace that hope that will lead us with a strong faith forward no matter what. We're called to love because love is the only way that this world can recognize that we are the disciples of Jesus, that God is with us. And the one that loves, God is with him, and the light of Christ shines upon him. And those that we do not love, we live in darkness, according to St. John. So let us be mindful of how much we are loving, how much we are hoping, how much we are trusting God and our brothers and sisters in this journey of faith. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, as Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord our God. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and check us everlasting life.
We celebrate the feast of Saint Elizabeth and Sidon, the founder of the daughters of charity. Let us pray for all our sisters who are working in education, in serving the poor, and all those men and women who dedicate their hearts to honor God in humble service. Let's bring forward also your intentions, and today the Mass is for the people of our parish. Let us pray. O oh God, who crowned with the gift of true faith, Saint Elizabeth and Seton, burning sealed to find you, grant by her intercession and example that we may always seek you with diligent love and find you in daily service with sincere faith. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever's without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that, we, that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Oh God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Mountains shall yield peace for the people and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon be more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them. For they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. By now it was already late, and his disciples approached him, saying, 
This is a deserted place, and it's already very late. Dismiss them so they can go to the surrounding farms and villages and buy themselves something to eat. He said to them in reply, Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Are we to buy 200 days' wages worth of food and give it to them? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they have found out, they said, Five loaves and two fish. So see, he gave orders to have them sit down in groups on the green grass. The people took their places in rows by hundreds and by fifties. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up twelve wicker baskets full of fragments. And what was left of the fish, those who ate of the loaves, were five thousand men. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus and his disciples are trying to get away and rest. But Jesus is moved by the needs of others. The image of a shepherd with his sheep is very powerful here. Without a shepherd, meaning they were suffering in need of help. They are sick people being brought by their friends and relatives. People with unclean spirits. People who have been rejected, kicked out of the synagogues or churches, tax collector centers. All they have been told by their religion leaders that God doesn't want them because they were unclean. They were outcast. Many of these people were following Jesus because they were in need. They were in need of both spiritually and physically. And they are literally running after him. Why? because he cares for them. Perhaps they say, I am not sure if he's a prophet or a nice guy or a rabbi. I just know that he cares. And I need him. And Jesus recognized this. And he wants to meet their deepest needs. So, Jesus, what is it Jesus teaching us about our identity as ambassadors and servants? Jesus calls each and one of us here to spread his good news. And spread the good news through the world. The good news that John talked about in the first reading when he says, and this is love. Not that we have loved God, but he loved us. And sent his son as an expiation of our sins. This is really great news. He's saying that God loved us 
first. Not when we are good enough or holy enough or finally get our lives together. He always loved us first from the beginning of time. And that is why he came down from heaven to earth and became men to be among us and get to know us. Our life now is in the story of how God saves sinners. And therefore, we all are in a mission to share the good news. When I first, when I was first called to the diaconate, I was doubtful, just like the apostles in today's gospel. I thought, what do I have to offer to the people of God? I am not a scholar. I am not a theologian. I have very little education and taught myself English. As I have told you before, I had a major hemorrhagic stroke 10 years ago. I am the oldest in my formation group, so I don't have youth to offer. All I can say to the Lord is, I offer you the little that I have. If you want me, Lord, I'm willing. I am willing to serve you. And that was almost five years ago. And I still doubt at times about, about my abilities, about my worthiness. But I remember the words that Jesus told Paul. My grace is enough. And by the grace of God, brothers and sisters, I was able to complete my classes this last three and a half years. So I can be here today to serve you, the body of Christ. And if it is God's will, I will be ordained in June along with my brother Wayne Hefner and Daniel Sanchez. So we need your prayers all this time. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. When we hand over all that we have, even when we doubt, he can will, he can and will multiply and beyond our imagination. I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, it's not easy to surrender. But when we surrender what little we have, our little loaves and fish, Jesus can bless it and can do wonders with them. Please stand. With complete faith in the overflowing graciousness of our loving God, let us bring him into our knees. For an increase in priestly and religious vocations, may God call men and women to dedicate their lives to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect in this world for the sanctity of all human life, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the physical and spiritually hungry, may Christ generously provide for their every need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God dwell among us, draw us even more deeply to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, <clears throat> may they soon be welcomed at the table of the wedding feast. Let us pray to the Lord. And for the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in silence, in the silent of our hearts, you may offer your own special intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, we thank you for listening to our prayers, and we thank you for giving us your light and your life through Christ our Lord. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child, holy so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. So me, brothers and sisters, is that these are sacrifices may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. With the praise and glory of God's name, for the good and the good of all the church, amen. O oh Lord, we ask you to look graciously upon our gifts placed on this altar, 
in celebration in memory of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, in grant by the power at work in this sacrifice, that we may be more deeply inserted in the mystery of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God it is truly right, right and just to give you thanks, most holy Father of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light of all nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with the angels and all the saints, we join in the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Osana in excelsis, Benedictus, Qui venit in nomine domini, Osana in excelsis. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You form men and women in your own image, and entrusted the whole world to their care, so that in serving you alone, their creator, we may have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we have lost your friendship, you did not, you did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek you may find you. Time and time again, you have offered your covenants to the prophets and taught us to look toward salvation. And so you love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you send your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Incarnated by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful a heart of joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the death, he destroyed death and restored a new life for us. And that we may no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe. So that bringing to perfection his work in the world, we may sanctify creation to its fullness. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these gifts, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. For this celebration is a great mystery which he held for us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own to the stream who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, gave you thanks and praise, broke it and gave it to them and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body that will be given up for you. When the supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Took the cup and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the challenge of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be brought for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. Brothers and sisters, the mystery of our faith. Save us, the Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand as we wait his coming in glory. We offer you his body and blood, sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and this one cup, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. It may truly be a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name and your glory. Therefore, O oh Lord, remember now all whom we offer this sacrifice, especially for your servant, Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, the clergy, your deacons, and we especially pray for all our deacons and pre-deacons in our church. That you may fill them with your Holy Spirit and serve this community, your holy people, with gracefulness of heart. Father, remember also those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the death who has faith you have only known. And to all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into your heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, saints in your kingdom, and there in the whole creation, free from corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom you have bestowed on the world everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please stand, brothers and sisters in faithfulness, in the assurance that we are God's beloved children, let us call upon him as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and the glory are yours Lord, now and forever. forever. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us share one another the sign of peace. Peace with you, Father. A new stay, we told his peccata mundi, miserere nobis. A new stay, we told his peccata mundi, miserere nobis. A new stay, Tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pah. 
Behold, behold, the only begotten Son of God present here in our midst. Behold, the Son of Mary, who came one of us, that we may have life through him. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we for being called to the Supper of the Lamb. Till through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Sad and lowly place they bend on hovering wing and ever o'er its babble sounds the blessed angels sing. crushing Lord, whose forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow. Look now Glad and golden hours come swiftly on the wing. Oh, 
Let's pray. As we have partake of the sacrament of our salvation, while recalling the memory of St. Elizabeth and Sidon, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that we may be inflated with a burning desire for the heavenly table, and by its power, consecrate our lives faithfully in the service to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. First, I want to ask you for your prayers for Father Andrew. He's sick. He doesn't have COVID. I took him to the, hospital, uh, to the doctor yesterday. I uh, also took the COVID test. We both were negative. But he needs some rest. So he just have a regular common cold. And fatigue, he's been tired. So I told him to take a rest and recover. So I want to with you and your, ask you to pray for him. As soon as he's recovered, he will come back to us and celebrate the Eucharist with us. So may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to glorify the Lord with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day. O salutaris hostia, quei celi pandis hostium, bella premunt hostilia, darobur fel Eterna gloria, qui vitam sine termino, nobis donet in patria. Thank you.